Okay, yeah. I've um, started the uh, GPIO library development in Python uh, over a year ago now. Um, it's gone, uh, it's come uh, quite a way in the meantime. Uh, people are doing an awful lot with it than could have thought of a year ago. Uh, I started off it, just to a very, very read of an input and a very read of an output using the uh, sys class device files. It was relatively slow. Um, and shortly afterwards, I rewrote it to use the um, threat memory access registers. Uh, more recently, I've added a few more things. Um, first of which is interrupt handling, which I put a demo of on the board here. Um, interrupt handling uh, uses a lot less CPU uh, than polling, which, which I had to do a while back. Uh, Everybody know, know what polling is and interrupts are? Is anybody that doesn't? You can put your hand up. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 back there. he doesn't know what oh, polling and interrupts are. <laughs> uh, oh boy, Im imagine, um, imagine you're waiting for a, for a phone call, uh, somebody to phone you up with a message. Uh, with, uh, with polling, what you've got to do is walk across. Is the phone ringing? No, it's not. Walk back. Carry on with the job. A uh, moment later, check the phone. Is it ringing again? Pick it up. No, it's not. You carry on like that all day. You waste an awful lot of time. Um, it interrupts. Um, you, you just hear the phone ring. And you think, ah, I'll stop what I'm doing. I'll interrupt what I'm doing. I'll run, answer the phone. Then when I'm done dealing with the phone call, I'll continue with what I was doing. So that's uh, interrupts versus polling. That's why interrupts are a much more efficient way of, um, of doing things that don't, that need to be um, dealt with in a timely manner. And the way I've implemented it with um, Raspberry Pi GPIO uh, Python module is it uses callback functions uh, whereby you just write a separate function which gets calls um, whenever uh, an event occurs like a button press or that type of thing and it, um, it runs it in a separate thread at the same time as the rest of the program uh, um, multitasking is as good as the operating system can do uh, much more timely and, and efficient than continuous. So how, much, how much reduction do you think you've seen in processor from the sort of early uh, versions? Well, well, that's on the demo here. All oh, right, so I didn't mean to talk to you. No, you've reminded me to show the demo. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I've not got code from screen, but on here I've got a, I've got a very tiny LED and a button. And you press a button, it should. Okay. This one's on pulling. When you press a button, um, it toggles the LED. Um, that's currently using 2% CPU. Ju just um, continuously checking for uh, see that button's been pressed. 2% CPU. That's an awful lot of CPU for something trivial. That, that's a polling method. Um, there's an improved polling method whereby it, so you don't need to check uh, anything like as frequently. The operating system will uh, set, or the library will set a flag um, when an interrupt's occurred, and you, uh, you can you can pull that flag maybe once a second or something. Uh, it doesn't eat anything like the CPU. Uh, that's running now, it's not even registering on the task manager. Um, again, you can see that uh, the light goes on. The light goes on. Uh, what you probably notice now is that I've got a little bit of switch bounce. It's a bit too fast. Uh, sometimes press a button and it's 
um, flickers the LED a few times. To press the button once, and it actually thinks it's pressed it more than once. That's called switch bounce. And armed with the way around, switch bounce. the next demo. Um, yeah, this is all built into the library. Um, a simple press of the button there, and it's not clicking at all. Um, the way the switch bounce works is that um, when it uh, detects an edge, an edge being the difference between the signal going from high to low in this case, and it detects that, if it says, right, it generates the interval, it calls the callback routine. And any edge for the next, I, th I think I've used 200 milliseconds in this case, every edge for the next 200 milliseconds it ignores. Uh, that way your callback routine only gets called once per button press. So that's it all sorted out for the users, they can just use that Excuse and don't have to worry about it. Yep. Why don't you just at the beginning of your interrupt routine cancel the interrupts? And then re-establish the interrupt at the end of your interrupt routine. Uh, it's it's not a traditional uh, interrupt handler in if you've used C before and from that sort of sense. It's um, it way it's implemented is using callback routines in Python. So I mean your uh, in, internal internal to the library. That's that's what it does. All right. Uh, that way you way internally. Have, that way you wouldn't have to have your two hundred millisecond delay, would you? Yeah, it internally it cancels it, waits for 200, then re-enables it. That's all, that's all hidden to you. Why do you have to do that if you only get an interrupt on edge? Um, well, when, you, when you press a button, uh, you don't get a clean edge. It, it bounces around uh, on, off, on, off. Um, well, it dies, dies out. You get several edges <coughs> in a short space of time. Really? Yeah, all yeah. switches yeah. do that. Right. You just don't notice it because somebody's put a capacitor or something in there. Yeah, you can do it in hardware. Yeah. I have actually got a capacitor on, on this. Um, it's not connected at the minute. But, uh, if you want to look uh, later on, you can compare with capacitor to without capacitor. <coughs> so I thought I'd have the capacitor disconnected for demonstration purposes uh, for now. Anyway, that's the... Um, Interrupt tandem with the edge, edge handling um, routines are put in. Uh, the next uh, bit thing I've added to the library is pulse width modulation, which is a way um, uh, instead of uh, your output either being on or off, high or low, um, it switches it between on and off at whatever speed you set it to, the frequency that is. Um, which is good for speed controlling motors, which we've got lots of robots which use PWM. It's our life blood. Which you can see later. <laughs> uh, it will also control the brightness of an LED, which is what I'm going to do. Very simple circuit on here, does everything. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, software only PWM at the moment, which means it uses a lot more CPU than uh, it will when I've finished writing it. Um, to use hardware PWM, uh, which means it's the SOC itself. Um, doing the timing. Internally, it will um, do all the hard work for you so your software doesn't have to. Uh, I'm not quite there yet, but software PWM is a good approximation for non um, critical things like the motor controllers and brightness on LEDs and so on. Uh, hopefully, when I write it in the next few weeks, uh, the library itself, the API, all the, all the function calls should be the same uh, between software and hardware. <coughs> so you, check, you upgrade the library and you suddenly notice a performance increase. That, that's what I'm aiming for anyway, when I finally get there. Anyway, a quick, quick demo here of uh, what PWM does. That even it lights off. You can see the LED uh, fading in and out. And yeah, the brightness of that LED is controlled by uh, changing the what's technically called the juice cycle. 
pulse width modulation. Basically, how long uh, each pulse each pulse lasts within the time period of the frequency you've set. So you could set the brightness of the LEDs percentage. Anyway, that's that's running at quite a high frequency, so you, you can't really see the LED flickering. Uh, what, we, what we can do with the library is slowly right down. So we right down. Uh, you can see it flashing maybe once, about once a second there. Uh, so if you if you want to a flashing LED code, instead of having to continuously run your own loop, you just uh, say right, create PWM, PWM on that channel, and it so switch on for half the time, and switch off for half the time. Yeah. Uh, in a, in a separate thread hidden away to it. Because it's implemented in C, it's relatively quick compared with if you if you were to write it in pure Python yourself. Can, can you recommend us on any GPI? Okay. Uh, yeah, it works on any pin that you can use as a standard GPIO. GPIO. Even the hardware <coughs> modulation. Yeah, it'll work on any pin that's connected to the SOC. Do the sorry, do the interrupts work on it? Um, as far as I know, uh, I'm not sure if I've actually been through every single pin testing it. As far as I know, it's never been. Certainly on the, the basic eight pins that are uh, allocated for GPIO. Right, so that, that's where we've got with the library so far. Uh, there's still still quite a few things it won't do yet. <coughs> so, um, I, I, I have uh, a couple of things I have done as well. Uh, you can actually set an initial value for an output uh, before you um, set up the channel as an output. Um, that was required by somebody who wanted had a ha relay running a lot of power. Didn't have some I initial um, surge or blip um, between setting the channel up and uh, setting it to its initial value. So. I've added that. Uh, now here's all the coming up, coming soon things. Um, internally to the library, uh, those that code with it, I'm tidying up all the exceptions because uh, there's a lot of them and don't really need to be there. Don't serve much of a purpose having so many, so many there. So I'm simplifying that. Uh, hopefully, very soon I'll be adding. Um, hardware-based PWM. Um, I squared C will be adding that when you get around to it. And the SPI, which I'm sure there's quite a few of these robots already running with that, we're going to see um, shortly. Um, and the last one to add is one wire. Uh, there's quite a lot of people. I think it's the 18B20, is it, the temperature sensor? Quite a lot of people um, using those with Raspberry Pis. So we're going to uh, add one wire library as well uh, when I finally get around to it. Um, yeah, that, that's where we started. That's where I am now. Hopefully, that's where I'll be in a few months' time. The uh, GPIO library. Uh, any questions or move on to the next um, one? How many um, bits with the um, PWM is? Uh, well, the in a period. Um, it would be so many bits per period. How many bits per period? Um, so so far at the moment, the only the only control you've got over it is it's it's only one bit. You can set the frequency and you can set the duty cycle. It's okay. one pulse per um, cycle. Right. So it won't do multiple pulses in that at the moment. Right. That's that's a uh, possible improvement in future. So, um, I think hard, hardware-based PWM is <coughs> one of the first because being software-based, I don't quite get the accuracy out of it at the moment. Yeah. It, it, it's good enough for LEDs and most motors, but uh, with timing critical stuff, it's, it's a bit hit and miss. Are you going to do a, a dedicated server one as well? Uh, I'm not 
I'm not sure yet. That's that's a bit towards the bottom of the okay. get list. There was already a, a good live VM there called Servo Blaster that does a um, do, that does a good job with servos on the Alpha Five. That, that uses the hard, hardware based way of doing things or the software based way of doing things. So, but we just want your one library to do it all for us, Ben. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much.